A good adaptation knows what to leave in and what to change, but it's always fun to see the differences. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 differences between Bird Box, movie, and book. Charlie, Charlie, it'll be research for the book. Okay, be awesome. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking our blindfolds off to look at the differences between Josh Mallerman's 2014 novel Bird Box and Netflix's 2018 adaptation. Spoilers for both the book and the movie ahead. Number 10. The House of Survivors In the book, Mallory remains in hiding with her sister for three months before meeting other survivors. When her sister succumbs to the creatures, Mallory drives to a house that she knows is taking in survivors, thanks to an ad in the local paper. With the apocalypse well underway, the house already has established rules, such as using broomsticks to make sure that creatures don't slip inside with survivors. There's also a dog, Victor, who becomes Mallory's much-needed support buddy. In the adaptation, Mallory and a random group are thrown together at the same time. They have to figure out what works and what doesn't together, and they don't have the same team dynamic. Hey, 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 hey! Oof. Number 9. Character Changes Not every character made it from print to screen, and others were made up for the movie. Mallory's sister Shannon made the cut as Jessica, and they're still an Olympia, Gary, and Tom. Felix and Cheryl were also adapted, but housemates Don and Jules were axed. Instead, we got to meet John Malkovich's Douglas, a new character, although his cynicism vaguely recalls Dawn's. I'm sure they'll send someone soon. No, the only thing that will happen soon is we're all gonna die soon. Lucy, Charlie, and Greg are also exclusive to the adaptation, with Greg's fate inspired by a character mentioned but never actually encountered in the novel. Overall, however, it's the survivor's dynamic that changes the most, as in the book, they spend around half a year together, rather than several weeks. Number 8. Mallory's Sister As well as a new name, Mallory's sister also got a different timeline and final fate for the movie. In the novel, Shannon is an early believer that the strange incidents being reported should be taken seriously. This thing seems serious. Wow, you literally have no food. What, what thing? What thing? Are you serious? I'm serious. Turn on the news, dum-dum. Her attention to the story at last convinces Mallory that they should cover the windows and try to write it out. She dies, however, when she glimpses the outside through one of the window coverings. In the adaptation, on the other hand, her time with Mallory during the crisis is much briefer. Driving Mallory back from a checkup at the hospital as all hell breaks loose, she sees something horrible and quickly ends her life. Number 7. Tom Book Tom is the clear leader of the house, always coming up with new ideas and planning for the future. While he and Mallory have implied interest in one another, it never gets physical. In contrast, Movie Tom enters the house at the same time as Mallory, and while he's clearly very brave, he's just another member of the group. Cover your eyes. What? I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the door. No! I, there's, a, there's a person out there. I have to open the door. Unlike in the novel, he survives Gary's plan, kills Gary, and helps Mallory raise the kids for the next five years, during which time they become a couple. His death on screen is a heroic sacrifice, and Mallory's final prompt to start the journey downriver. Number 6. The Problem versus Monsters In Mallerman's novel, a lot of time is dedicated to different theories about what's going on. Is it atmospheric, a gas, a warp in reality, or monsters of some kind? Furthermore, during the event known as The Problem, people don't only kill themselves, but also viciously attack anyone nearby. The movie, however, establishes early on that there are creatures of some kind running around and that something about them is so horrible that people are driven to suicide, with almost no control over when and how. Number 5. The Timeline In the book, Mallory and Shannon live in hiding together as the problem engulfs the world. Streets are crowded with people escaping cities by car and on foot as witnesses report unexplained mass suicides. Additionally, Mallory is much earlier along in her pregnancy. She seeks out Tom's house when she's a little over three months pregnant, and is the only survivor from the original group when Gary infiltrates the house, then disappears never to be seen again. She remains there for four years, raising the children alone. In the film, of course, Mallory is very pregnant to begin with, and only in the house for what seems like several weeks. She raises the children with Tom for another five years, until more crazies like Gary make their appearances. Hey there, friend. Can I help you? I don't think so, friend. We can help you, though. Number 4. The Birds 
Surprisingly, for such a titular feature, the birds in the book are less central. Tom finds the birds while out scouting the neighborhood and leaves them outside the door as a rudimentary way to detect if someone or something is approaching the house. You guys, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. In the movie, it's Mallory who finds the birds in a grocery store, and she brings them with her when she takes to the river. By releasing them when she and the children arrive at the safety of the school for the blind, they become a more overt symbol of hope. What do you guys say? We let the birds go. Be with their friends. Should we do that? Number three, Mallory. Bird Box's heroine has a much larger character arc in the book. In the beginning, she is riddled with doubt, both about her pregnancy and the crisis occurring around her. It's different with the baby. It's an immediate love affair. It's not gonna be that way for me. Yes, it will. Oh, ma'am. She's less self-reliant and often defers to Tom in matters of survival. However, although she starts out meeker, we also get to watch her increasing resilience as she becomes stronger and more confident. The Mallory of the movie, on the other hand, seems a lot tougher from the get-go. She doesn't take BS from anyone and is able to take charge and make decisions quickly when needed. You have to do every single thing I say or we will not make it. Understand? Number two, the fall of the house. Gary's rampage through the house is terrifying enough in the movie, but it's arguably even more horrifying in the book. As Dawn, who's become Gary's protege, sabotages the house, Mallory and Olympia go into labor in the attic and can only listen in horror as their friends turn on one another. This includes Tom, who dies with everyone else in the bloodbath downstairs. Olympia still jumps out the window, but then hangs by her own umbilical cord. Olympia, let me see your baby. You're just so bad. Olympia, let me see your baby. Most horribly of all, there's someone else besides Gary in the room with Mallory, a creature which has entered the house and who she feels right next to her face before it slinks away with Gary on its heels. Give me the kids. Mm -hmm. Give me the children or I'll take them. Number one, the ending. In the book, Mallory hones the children's sense of hearing for four years. Upon their arrival at the school for the blind, they learn that many there have gouged out their eyes, and Mallory almost leaves until Rick explains it's not mandatory. Overcome with emotion, Mallory cries, and the book's last pages are bittersweet. In the adaptation, Mallory, Tom, and the kids live as normally as they can until Tom's death, and their journey to the school is action-packed. A madman tries to tear off their blindfolds, and the creatures, using a new strategy, almost get them all on the home stretch. Boy, girl, where are you? Don't take my children! Do not take my children! But at the safe haven, Mallory seems hopeful for the first time in years. Your name is Olympia. Yeah. Named after the sweetest girl I ever met. And your name? Your name is Tom. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.